everyone thought this was fake, but it wasn't. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. That's right, this $500 listing on Reverb that everybody, including me, just wrote off as one of those weird scams. We've talked about it a few times on the show. If you're ever shopping late at night on Reverb or early in the morning, sometimes you'll see a listing for like a Gibson Les Paul that's just way too good to be true of a price. Typically, if you look where they're located, it's generally non-US, but that's not always the case. But no, last month, I remember seeing this and going, nah but it disappeared real quickly, so I thought that meant Reaver pulled it down. It says AMD Opteron. That's interesting, but we've got gold hardware going on. It's been top wrapped. We've got clear knobs, kind of matches your white logo right here, but the toggle switch on this doesn't actually look like the regular Gibson style one. It's either that or they just have another metal washer around it with, that you don't normally see, but it's an iguana burst finish. So is this an authentic Gibson? Is that what we're questioning here? No, that's actually not what we're questioning. This happened a lot more often than you'd think. I call them promotional pieces. The late 90s, early 2000s was flooded with this type of stuff. You had Pepsi Les Pauls, Fruit of the Loom the Hawks, among many of other ones that we discover new ones all the time. Generally speaking, despite these things being limited edition or given away as company prizes, they're extra rare, they don't sell for premiums, they actually sell for considerably, considerably less than normal. Like my Dante Les Pauls. I had those a couple of years ago. I struggled to sell those things. I think I ended up getting like 1500 on one and 1800 on the other. Whereas if it didn't have the Donzi branding, at that point in time, it would have been about a $2,500 to $3,000 guitar. You have to discount these to get people to buy them because a lot of times they'll just get refinished. But there are a few select models that actually break the norm because the brand that is on them is so hyped up. We're talking things like the Playboy guitars, the Gibson promotional Gibson Les Paul, and then you get the weird body shaped ones like the Zippo lighter guitar, the NASCAR car guitar, the Jimmy Dean sausage car. Well, I'm not necessarily saying the weird shaped ones are worth a lot. Usually just people are asking a lot. But anyways, seeing a guitar like this this with weird custom branding and fretboard that has a different logo on it, it is not all that uncommon, especially if they're saying this is a 2003. So you're probably wondering, uh, what on earth is AMD Opteron? Well, it appears to be a computer processor. So it's kind of like putting Intel Xenon processor equipped on your Les Paul. Maybe that's a little bit more familiar to you. I, I don't know too much about computers and stuff like that. However, the fact that it has this cool iguana burst finish is actually pretty fascinating because that was a very new finish at this point in time. I had a 2004 59 reissue in an iguana burst that was from the Cloud 9 series. That was a pretty cool guitar, but this one's technically even before that. I honestly don't know when Gibson started using this finish, but it had to have been around that time, but this matches perfectly with, you know, printed circuit boards and things like that. So as far as promotional guitars go, yeah, it's kind of cool. This is a bit of an eyesore. I could live with the interesting fretboard inlays. I mean, you might be able to remove that if you really wanted to, but then we flip over to the back. It's just black. All right. But here's what's awesome about a lot of these promotional guitars. They're actually custom shop guitars. Like there's cheap ones that are just like bolt-on graphics. They're just Gibson USAs. Or ones like the Fruit of the Looms, like we were talking about. Those are USAs, just with a graphic slapped on it under the finish. But then you get beauties like this one, where it's a custom shop Les Paul standard. It's got all the great specs. Something like this without all the branding on it, probably a $3,500 to $4,000 guitar. And strangely, we have a 90s Gibson case with this one. So yeah, you're rather in two camps. You thought this was a scam because it's a fake guitar, or you thought it was a scam because it was a, a scam scam. But what have I told you guys? 1000% legit. Somebody sold it for $500. <laughs> I don't believe it. Patrick, where did you get this guitar? He's probably somebody that doesn't know the Gibson market too well. Maybe he was part of the company and he just decided to sell it. But right here, you can actually see Phoenix G purchased it. Amazing guitar, super fast shipping. And then he lists it on Reverb for 2,500. However, uh, oh, it looks a little bit different now. <laughs> this is such a tragic tale. I mean, the guy got such a good deal and then he ruined it. Now he knows he messed up and he did a bad job at the refinish, but can you really blame the guy? He got it for 500 bucks. The big AMD Opteron thing in here is quite ugly. 
but the rest of the finish was okay. So it's kind of like a light green color now. I wonder if a lot of that was just because he couldn't get all the stain out of the maple and he just like did a light rattle can finish over top of it. But this flame top in general is just really strange in this area. It's got one streak that's just a little bit wider than everything else. So that's probably why Gibson used it on this one in the first place. But this looks exactly like a Gibson mod collection type thing where they refinish it in satin on the top. And yeah, it doesn't look like the refinish work was the best, but he acknowledges it. But I'm sure there's a guitar forum post somewhere about this where he's like, hey, I just got this guitar for 500 bucks. Is it legit? And he talks about, should I refinish it or not? And then he goes, oh, too late. I already did. And now everybody's flaming him in there. <laughs> But he had it for 2500 and it sat for like a month. It looks like it eventually sold. I don't know what he ended up selling it for, but even with bad refinish on it, it's at least a $1,500 guitar. He might have been able to get 2500 in this market had he had just left it alone. But he says it only weighs 8.2 pounds, so I bet that thing's actually chambered. So I thought that was an interesting tale that needed to be shared. Sometimes those too-good-to-be-true deals are real, apparently. But now that the main story is done, I've got a couple of other gems I thought I'd share with you. We've got a Chuck Sclusive over here, which I don't know why. My brain, when I see this, I read Chuck Slave. <laughs> But this is a Chuck Levens of a Washington Music Center over in Maryland, where they took a traditional Trini Lopez model and gave it the olive drab finish. And I've got to say, it works incredibly well on this model. Normally, when you think of one of these things, I start to think Pelham Blue because of Dave Grohl. I mean, that's just the generation that I grew up with music wise. I'm sure other people, you know, actually think about Trini. But since this design existed in the 60s, this is like the perfect finish to kind of encapsulate that in a roundabout way. I mean, this thing also gives me a little bit of like country cowboy vibes because your crest right here it's made out of wood it matches the rosewood right here perfectly you get the cream and the green all the colors here are really jiving and of course you get your really cool split parallelogram inlays but that's not cheap it's seven thousand dollars Next up, we have one from Eddie's Guitars. This is a 355 for, wow, $13,000. You know, I actually saved this to my list before the Noel Gallagher 355s came out, and everyone's complaining that those things are 10 grand. I mean, look at this guy. It doesn't even have the baritone. And it's just as heavily aged. I don't understand why this thing's $13,000, but I think it looks really cool with that aged Pelham Blue finish. They turned out incredibly well. It's got a little bit of arm wear in this area. Got your long guard going on, all yellowed over in the right places. Then the back, it's all chewed up like it's supposed to be. However, not quite as heavily aged on the back of the neck of this one. So which would you guys choose? Would you choose the Oasis signature or would you choose the actual Oasis colored guitar? I'll be real with you, even paying premium market prices, you're going to be way better off with Noel signature in the long run. But they had not only one, but two of these made. Now this one, I don't like the look of the pickups as much, but it has very similar aging to the neck as we were seeing. And this one definitely has a lot more nicks and dings. Our friends over at Bizarre Guitar in Reno, Nevada, ironically where I purchased my review piece for the Gallagher review, they've got this really cool gold sparkle custom. Got the sparkle top deluxes of the 60s and then you have the 2000s era Les Paul standards that they just did a whole bunch of different sparkle tops for bringing in the 2000s. And you just don't find gold Les Paul customs too often, so to find one with a sparkle top on top of it, that's kind of cool. I like that. However, I feel like we almost need like golden inlays or something to match that top. I think a natural back and side would actually look pretty smart with a finish like this, but I think this entire guitar is just golden sparkle. It kind of reminds me of the Abalone series that we talked about in this episode. I've got my Lavender Sparkle one, and they had other finishes within it, but none of them were exactly like this. So if you really like those, but you wanted something a little bit different, you know, maybe check one of these out. If I wasn't already swamped with things that I need to get reviews and demos done for, I'd probably hit these guys up and buy this thing too. Apparently the story behind a lot of these guitars is Gibson had like a hot list of things at the custom shop. Like maybe they needed to rework some guitars because they weren't selling well or they just had surplus or something. I don't know. But a few dealers have been getting some interesting stuff due to that hot list. How about we check out a vintage modification? All right, so I've reviewed and documented a guitar called the SG Exclusive before. What makes it cool is the fact that it has a coil split knob on it that you can actually set to control how much of the winding you want to take out of the pickup. They're dirty fingers, they're the double creams. It's kind of like the Les Paul GK55 from this episode, but they made like 500 or so of them. But this one is, it's purple. <laughs> I like it. 
You don't see crazy, weird modifications on rare limited edition guitars too often. But no, somebody did a metallic purple apparently back in like the 80s or 90s if I remember reading the description properly. All the other stuff is completely original, so that is actually good because these pickups, they're worth like 800 to 1000 bucks. These knobs alone, probably a good 200, 250. The electronics within, probably another 100. I mean, TP6 tailpieces, they can range from 50 to 250. Just depends on condition and how badly somebody wants it. Harmonica bridges. If these slots are in good shape, that's when they're worth a lot. I mean, an example like that, probably a solid 200, 250. The quality of the refinish work looks, you know, pretty good, all things considered. So, I mean, the husk of this guitar is probably worth at least a thousand. So, I mean, you can add all that up and say what it should be worth. However, you might just fall in love with this guitar for what it is, a purple SG exclusive. It's not original. I mean, you can definitely tell that here. I mean, at least they saved most of the serial number that they could. It looks like they might have had to have restamped it or something like that. It's either that or the paint just kind of overflowed stuff. Or maybe they just restamped the Made in USA right there. And hey, it's also got the chainsaw case. And that one looks pretty nice. Looks like our lid ribbon is gone or never was there. The big question is, do the hinges still support the lid? And I'm betting no since it's resting against a couch. So probably another 250 there. But how much is the seller asking for this one? 3,349. I think that could have been priced much worse. I mean, that's like a deal at 2,500, right? So it was definitely kind of priced fairly for what it is, but you would really have to want a refinished example of one of those. Or on the opposite end of the spectrum, if you want an SG exclusive in general, there, there's none to be found right now. I mean, original ones have sold recently between, you know, 1,500 and 4,500. I'm sure one of those has a headstock repair or something, but I'm telling you, all those parts, they're worth quite a pretty penny. So we'll have to see what the market determines for that one. Could be a good candidate to restore one that's like mint condition, but somebody replaced a pickup on it or something. All right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care.